Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. This is your teacher Sumaira Malik. Hope you all are fine and enjoying your vacations. Okay ji, let's begin with our lecture of today. Okay class, we're going to have our science lecture today and this is our first lesson. Before I start with the lesson, I'll start up with something that we all must do, right? And that is stop of the day. If you remember, we usually did in our classes as well. So that is all about that if you can learn something new, you are the one, you can learn something new every day if you listen, right? So this means if you are a good listener, you are going to be a good speaker. So remember this for today as well. Be a very good listener so that you can be a very good speaker by the end of this session, right? Okay. So for today, uh, I would like you all to have your books in front of you. We'll be starting with the animal world. It's unit number two. We'll start with 2.1, that is essentials of survival. And today we'll be dealing with starting from page number 12 till page number 16, right? So I hope that you all are having your books with you and a pencil in your hand, right? Okay, so what do we understand by today's lecture? What we are going to do is by the end of this lesson, you all must be able to understand about essentials of survival, water, energy, and oxygen, right? We'll be dealing all these things today, and I hope by the end, you will all be clear about it. Okay, before I start explaining these, let's quickly have a look at the word bank. These are some difficult words from these pages, right? If you find anything else that comes difficult to you, you can underline it. And as a homework, you have to learn the spellings of these, right? So the first word is breathe, survive, chemicals, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, photosynthesis, essentials, consumers, primary, secondary, tertiary, producer. So these are a list of words that I thought I must share with you so that they will be helpful for you, right? And you have to learn the spellings, don't forget. Okay. Starting with the very first of the essential of survival. All animals, or we must say all living organisms, they need things to survive, some special things. Essential means something special, something important, right? So what are those three basic essentials of survival for us? So we'll start up with the first one, that is water, right? Now, water is the most precious thing on the earth, without which no living thing can exist. And that is the only reason and the main reason that life exists on earth. So if we are saying that it is the most important thing Right? So why do we need it? What are the reasons behind that water is very essential for us? So the first thing is that 70% of our body weight is 
water. That means our body is mainly made up of water. Water that is present in our blood, it helps to move food and other chemicals around the body. Then the water that is present in our saliva makes food soft to be chewed and swallowed easily, right? Remember it, whenever we chew something or whenever we put something in our mouth, we need to chew it so that we can easily take it inside us, so that we can easily swallow it. So who is the one who is helping us? That's the saliva that's present in our mouth and it is the one who is helping us to do it. Then the water in our sweat, when we are sweating in hot weather, it helps to cool our body. It helps to cool the temperature of our body. Water in muscles enable us to move our body. Our, the movement of our muscles is just because of it. And the most important thing that water in the urine remove toxic chemicals from our body. So who is the one who is removing all these toxic materials from the, our body? That's the water. This is how important water is for all living organisms. Now, the question comes in our mind, if water is such an important thing, then what is it made up of? Water is made up of two chemicals that are hydrogen and oxygen. If you can just look at the screen, can you see H2O written? Right, so this H2O is actually, this two means that there are two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. And when they combine, what do they make? They make a water molecule. The chemical name for water is H2O, which means that it stands for two units of hydrogen and one of oxygen. So I hope now it's clear. So the first essential that was water is done. Now, something more important and another important thing that is energy. Now, who is giving us this energy? Is it coming from the air? No, it's coming from the food that we eat. Energy is passed from one living thing to another living thing through food. So food is the one who is actually providing us with lots and loads of energy. That's why we say we must eat healthy food. Okay, if you come on page number 14, animals need energy so they can do all the things that they do. To perform all the activities in our life, we need energy. And who is going to give us that energy? That's the food. For example, a bird needs some energy to fly. Animals need, baby animals need energy to grow. Similarly, if the energy helps us to repair some damaged body parts and you need some energy to run, jump, sing, dance and learn as well. Like for example, you all are sitting in front of your PCs, right? So what actually you required, you required the energy to sit in front and then the very first point, listen very carefully. Okay. So to understand this energy, we have to understand the concept of food chain. You have learned this in your previous classes as well, but I'll just go through to it. A food chain shows how energy is transferred through food, right? We'll be dealing with that how food provides energy that can be transferred. Okay, so before we go into the details of this food chain, if you can look at this table, you've done it in your previous classes as well, if you remember, just a recap of it. We all know about carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. Right? So, what are carnivores? These are the animals that only eat meat, meat eating animals. And if you can see the examples, you can relate to it fox, wolf, falcon, 
eagle, owl. So what are these? The animals that eat meat. Then comes the herbivores. These are the animals that only eat plants like horse, deer, giraffe, cow and goat. If we talk about omnivores, we as human beings are the omnivores. Why? Because we eat both plant and the meat. Then comes hen, crow, rats, bear. Now these are the examples of the animals that eat only meat, only the plant, or the ones like human beings that eat both, right? So, now comes three different types of consumers, right? To explain the diagram that is there on your book, page number 15, first you must know what are primary consumers, what are secondary consumers and what are the tertiary consumers? Primary means the first stage, the starting stage, right? And those starters, they just eat plants. Secondary means the second stage as you can see the name, secondary, second. They are the ones who eat primary consumers. And tertiary, the third stage, these animals eat secondary consumers. And now to explain all this, I'll explain you this diagram and it is there on the book page number 15 as well. You can look at from that. Now who is the one who is providing the energy to us? Energy to the producer, that is the grass actually, right? So, the grass will grow while taking energy from the sun, right? And grass is the producer. Now we talk about a grasshopper. That is the primary consumer. Why is it the primary one? Because he's on number level number one. That is the first stage. Grasshopper eats grass, right? So, he's the primary consumer. Coming towards the bluebird who eats the grasshopper is known as a secondary consumer on the second stage. For the third stage, who is going to eat this bluebird? A snake is going to eat it. And so the snake is the tertiary consumer. And now that snake is going to be eaten by an owl, right? Now, owl is an apex predator. What does that mean? It means there are certain animals that cannot be eaten by any other animal, right? But that does not mean that they do not contribute to this food chain. They does it. Like, how do they do it? Once they die, they are decomposed. Their body is decomposed and all the nutrients from their body goes inside the soil, the decomposers that are the fungi, right? What do they do or the bacteria? They just decompose, fill the soil with, with the nutrients and then again pass it on to the first step that was the producer, that's the grass, right? So in this way, the whole cycle continues and the food chain is completed. Now, the third most important essential of survival is oxygen, right? So let's do one thing. Everyone, just try to hold your breath for like about a minute right so let's start by holding our breath let's see who is the one who is going to do it more effectively your time starts now you have to hold your breath if the sam i can see you
Are you all actually holding your breaths? Well, I guess Isa Azhar is doing it, right? And no one else? Not interested in this activity, huh? Ishal, you don't want to hold your breath? Okay, Momina is also doing it. Okay, I guess just leave it. What have you felt? Isn't it difficult to hold it for so long? Yes, it is. So this means oxygen is the most important thing without which we cannot survive, right? And now what is oxygen? It's a chemical, right? If you just look at your book, page number 16, right? All animals need oxygen to survive. Without this oxygen, we cannot survive. And where do we get this oxygen from? Animals get their oxygen from plants. Plants produce oxygen. So what do animals give plants in return? Animals produce carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide in the same way that animals need oxygen. Like we cannot live without oxygen. Similarly, plants cannot live without carbon dioxide. Why is it so? Because they need it in the process of preparing their food. As long as there are lots of animals and plants living close together, there is enough oxygen and carbon dioxide. This is because animals breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. So if you look at this slide, this is an interrelated process. How? The animals, what are they inhaling? Inhale means to take inside. So what do we take inside? We take oxygen, right? And when we exhale, that means bring out. So what are we bringing out? We are taking out carbon dioxide. So we are the ones who take oxygen from our environment and exhale carbon dioxide to the environment that is used by the plants in the process of photosynthesis. And if you remember in your previous classes, we are done with the process of photosynthesis. So that means it is quite clear to you. Plants are called producers because they make their own food by using energy of the sun during the process of photosynthesis. Plants make their own oxygen during photosynthesis while animals get oxygen from the plants. Okay, after this, remember one thing and that is none of these three essential things needed for survival is more or less important than the other. We need all of them to survive. For example, if we have energy but no oxygen, we cannot live. If we have just water, no energy, no oxygen, again we cannot survive. So this means all these three basic essentials of survival are really very important for every one of us to survive. Right? So after this, as we are done with the topic, I'll give you a homework. First was you have to learn all the difficult words that I've given in the word bank, right? Second is if you have your workbooks with you right now, if you don't have it, don't worry. Just note down the page numbers. That is page number six and page number eight. What you will do is you're just simply going to do question number one from page number six, right? It's all about just writing names below the given diagrams. Then comes your page number eight. That is again, question number one. 
all the it's all about circling the correct options and as we are we are done with this uh, topic so it will be very easy for you to do to do both these questions now what i'll be doing is just to give you a quick recap and to recall all the concepts that we have completed we are, i am going to show you something else now just hold on for a minute Adapted my math. Come explore the site with me. I'm in first grade, so I'll pick that. Neato! A fun fishing adventure. <laughs> Just listen to this, right? No matter where on earth you go, living things are connected to each other. From the tiniest of organisms to the largest of creatures, all living things need energy to survive. So where does that energy come from? Well, matter and energy passes from one organism to another, connecting living things like links in a chain, a food chain. Of course, a food chain is not an actual chain. It's a way to talk about the relationships between organisms and show how matter and energy flow between living things. Every living thing on Earth is part of a food chain, including you, and most things are part of more than one. All of the energy in Earth's food chains comes from the sun. The sun's energy reaches the Earth as light and heat, and plants capture some of it and convert it into food through photosynthesis. Because plants make or produce their own food from the sun's energy, they are called producers. Every food chain must begin with a producer, for example, grass. That's because animals cannot create their own food. They must eat or consume energy from other sources. That's why animals are called consumers. The second link in a food chain is a consumer that eats plants, an herbivore. When an animal eats plants, some of the energy the plant captured from the sun is transferred into the animal's body, where it is used for things like moving, waving, and growing. An herbivore is called a primary consumer. Primary means first, because an animal eating plants is the first consumer in the food chain. Let's add a rabbit to our food chain. Next comes a secondary consumer, the second consumer in the food chain. This consumer is a carnivore and gets their energy by eating other animals. Maybe our rabbit will get eaten by a fox. When the fox eats the rabbit, part of the energy that the rabbit got from the grass is transferred to the fox. This is the end of this simple food chain. The rabbit eats the grass, then the fox eats the rabbit. The energy that came from the sun is captured by the grass, transferred to the rabbit, and then transferred to the fox. Some food chains are longer than this one, but there can't be too many links in a food chain. Each animal in the food chain uses up a lot of the energy from the previous level instead of passing it on, meaning that only about 10% of the energy consumed by an animal will be passed on to the next level. Let's take a look at a longer food chain that also begins with grass. This time, let's make our primary consumer the grasshopper. The grasshopper eats the grass and then gets eaten by a secondary consumer, a bluebird. 
Then the bluebird gets eaten by a tertiary or a third level consumer, a snake. The snake is eaten in turn by an owl. The owl is the apex predator in this food chain. Apex predators are not hunted and eaten by any animals. We say that they are at the top of the food chain. You probably recognize a lot of apex predators, like lions, sharks, eagles, and crocodiles. Just because they don't get eaten doesn't mean that they don't contribute to the food chain, however. When an animal dies, their body is broken down by decomposers. Decomposers are usually bacteria and fungi that break down dead plants and animals into nutrients in the soil that in turn help the plants at the beginning of the food chain to grow. It's the circle of life. Natural ecosystems usually have more complicated food chains, however. A network of interconnected food chains is called a food web. The arrows are used to show which direction the energy flows and help keep track of the connections between organisms. Now that you understand a little bit more about food chains, see if you can find the connections between living things around you. What is three plus four? Check your answer here to earn fun pets. Okay, class. So I guess everyone is clear about the topic of today, right? If you have any questions or any queries, you can just write them down in the chat box and we can answer them one by one. Okay, class. Uh, what you're going to do is uh, don't forget to complete your homework, right? You have to do workbook pages. Then you have to go through page number 12 till 16, right? Give it a good read. Underline all the difficult words. Learn the spellings. And be very clear about the topic, right? So just for the revision, we have these three questions that name the essentials of survival. Now by the end of the lesson, you all must know what are the three basic essentials of survival. Then how is water important for us, right? And what are three types of consumers, right? These are the three questions. Now you must be able to answer them right so this is all for today i hope you had a good time Thank you so much, everyone.